that's where I get a little honest. I, I don't mind saying things that are a little bit honest because uh, we have to play the game a little bit. And I'm not like one of those type A rule followers, but I also know that I need to uh, make it manageable for myself. And so back to that story I told about doing the proposal and getting that assessment initiative passed when I came super uber prepared and they said, whatever, Jessica. Well, it goes back to that. I'm sure you can think of a situation in your classroom or in your school where you have not had, you have a complaint <laughs> or you have an issue with something that's going on. Well, there's two ways to approach the issue. Complaining is part of what we do when we're on fire. We get this email and we're mad and we are like, this thing can't be, you can't move me to this school, I can't possibly teach 30 sections this year, are you crazy? I'm gonna have 900 students on my roster. And you're fired up and you march into your principal's office and say, this is not, and complaining could get you the reason, and it sounds like complaining to them. You're just upset, you just want to talk about this issue that you have. But they hear it as complaining. They don't want to do more work. They can't handle it. It's not true. It's just not right. And so complaining um, might get you the results you want, but the downside is it could lose you your respect from your colleagues and your administration. And so we have to really approach any issue we have and potential solutions with doing things in a professional way because you may or may not still get the results you want, but what you will save is the respect and your integrity from your colleagues and your administration, which as we know as art teachers, we're in an uphill battle. No one ever told me that nobody would, when I started teaching art, that nobody would respect the arts as much as me around. Because my parents were so supportive, they said art is a great profession, we're proud of you, go into it. You, you and I give each other this utmost respect, don't we? but we forget that all the other people don't. They don't have that innately inside of them. So we're on the uphill battle to try to combat that. So here are my three rules for getting what you want. Now, does it always work? No, but can it be helpful? Sure. Number one, productive. Don't focus on the complaints. Focus on what is the exact issue at hand and just keep it very factual and productive. Number two, informative. What data? can you bring to the table? What information can you bring to basically blow them out of the water? Because you're so prepared and you so know your stuff and you know what's best for kids and you know about art and get that in there. And then solutions based. Never ever leave a meeting where you're trying to advocate for yourself without a comprehensive solution and plan to go forward. Because if you don't create a comprehensive solution plan to go forward about something you want, no one will create it for you. And if they do create it, it probably won't be good. Because remember, your administration is very busy. They don't have time to think about what is the optimal solution for the art teacher in this PD situation? Or what might the art, will they be left out? Hmm, I better think about that. They're not thinking like that. It's not because they don't respect you or like you. It's just, there's too much else. So you are the one that comes up with these solutions. And my three page solution of like a comprehensive assessment plan with dates and specifics, they were like, looks good to us. And so I just wanna, want you to remember that it's one thing to have a proposal it's one thing to give ideas, but where's the solution? And if you can come up with your own solution, hopefully you like it better than the one that someone else would come up with. Um, there's two more things here with playing the game of navigating today's educational landscape. And the one that I think is the most important here is never sacrifice art. Okay, you have to do Common Core. You have to link the Common Core and do a student growth goal with the Common Core in at least one of your classes in each semester, blah, 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 blah. I get it, it's fine. I understand, we have to do it. However, have, did you redesign your whole unit to reach the Common Core? Or did you find something you already did to implement into the Common Core? Because I made a pact with myself, and I'm sure you've thought about this too, never ever sacrifice the foundations of art making and art for a new initiative. Because you and I all know that that new initiative is gonna be bye bye in a couple years. And what did you do for those couple years? Sacrificed everything you believe in about teaching art and what you started in your motivations to mold to the initiative because you were trying to do the right thing. We all are. But how can you make something work? How can we all make something work in these new initiatives while never giving up our favorite art lessons, while never changing our curriculum? And just find that little connection, fill out the paperwork, get it done, and get back to teaching art. 